Hi everybody, this is some studio stuff. Uh, bits and pieces that musicians who work in studios will be totally familiar with, but most of the world don't work in studios and don't know really what goes on. So we're going to cover a, a couple of things here. We're going to start with something you may have heard of called click tracks. Now click tracks really came to the fore when we moved from analog recording, big old tape machines going around like that, into the digital age where the recording was controlled by computers. Now all the way through multi-track recording, uh, editing has been a tool we use to improve things to get them the way we want now. Um, in the analog days you could probably edit once or twice, you know, you, you might have had two takes where the second half of one take was a bit better than the second half of the first take. And if the tempos were close, you could get your razor blade out, bit of sticky tape, and stick the two bits of audio tape together. And most times it was seamless and nobody really knew. Uh, with the digital age, that changed completely. We're now dealing with computers. And when you work with computers, they really do like everything's in very regimented little chunks. The click track helped that happen. Uh, where strict time or controlled timekeeping, usually by the drummer, was enough. Uh, for computers, it's not quite enough. Uh, those old records that we hear, which were recorded without clicks, they have a movement in them. That's humanity, you know. We get excited, we come forward, we get relaxed, we pull back a little bit. Um, and that shows in tempos. Uh, that shows when, you, when you're playing a verse, you're holding it, and when you play a middle eight, you're pushing it to give some, give some impetus and some excitement. Uh, and when you're working with a click track, that really is very, very difficult to do. Uh, those old records, recorded without click tracks, done live in the studio. Uh, it was like a wave. All the musicians worked together and it didn't matter if it moved a little bit. It was fine. It felt good. <clears throat> now with the need to have control of the editing process on sometimes you could have a hundred different tracks of audio uh, on one, one piece of music. Now to keep that all working uh, digital editing needs to have precise chunks. And because the click track is a machine-generated uh, sound, doesn't matter what it is, it could be a cowbell, it could be a drum, it could be anything you want, so long as it's there and you play to that. Then when you need to, or if you need to, cut a section out and replace it with another section, you know it'll slot straight in because it's perfect time. Anyway, uh, going through some old tapes, I found a bit of recording that I did of a track called uh, House of Pain on the Bananas record. And the audio on it is uh, what I heard in my headphones, complete with click track. So I'm going to play that for you. And you'll see what drummers nowadays mostly have to deal with. Uh, those little discrepancies between the player and the click, and we're talking microseconds sometimes, um, they can also be adjusted later. And we'll show you a bit of that uh, on the control board uh, during this, this piece. Uh, anyway, watch the video and you'll hear what I heard in my headphones and get an idea of how, of how it works.
So that was one of the first attempts we had at uh, recording House of Pain. And if you're really uh, detailed about it, you see that it's not particularly well in with the click. I mean, we got it a couple of takes later. But I always find when I start to record a track with that machine control, my impression is that the click is always slower than I want to play it. In my head, the tune is always a little bit faster. And it takes four or five minutes for, for me to get back in the zone again and accept that I'm wrong and the tempo we decided on for the click is correct. Uh, it's a strange thing. But it's always the same, even to this day. First take, I'm always trying to play it too fast. Uh, maybe I'll never learn. Now I don't want to give the impression that freeform editing isn't possible in the digital world. Of course it is, but it is more time consuming and there's always that chance it may not work. So here you see all the different drum tracks. Each colored line is a different drum, different microphone. Uh, and the vertical lines you can see, they are the bar markers, which are set when we choose the tempo. The orange one, the second one down, is the one we're going to concentrate on. It's a snare drum track. Now we've moved one of the beats of the snare drum uh, late, that is behind the bar line, to show uh, what can be done when you've got a genuine mistake. First we have to find the note and isolate it. Whoops, there it was. Now we, you see it's behind the bar line. So we're going to move it, the whole section forward, before any other notes happen, so that that section is clean after the note. Maybe a little bit more. Now we do two little crossfades, and that blends all the sounds of the tracks together so you don't hear any, any cutoff of cymbals ring or anything like that. So now we're going to playback mode, and we check the uh, work we've done. In time, in time, in time. Here it comes, in time. And that's how easy it is to fix things these days. So that's how that happens. It doesn't happen a lot, or it shouldn't do. If, if, if the drum is any good, it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen every, every sort of three or four bars. You know, it may happen once, twice, three times in a track. But we found another piece here. This is a, again, I don't know, I keep, I'm going through all the bananas video so obviously I'm hitting these first. There's a track called Razzle Dazzle and the video you'll see is what became the master uh, backing track take. Well most of it did. I would say about 95-96% of it went out onto the record. But there were a couple of places where post-performance editing went on. Uh, there's one big one where a drum fill I play was taken off. Now, maybe the fill was just a little bit out with the click and we couldn't make it feel right, or maybe there was a bad note in there, or a microphone went dead, whatever. It could be so many different reasons why you, why you can't use something. Anyway, you'll see three or four points in this uh, video where what you see me play is not what you hear with your ears. Um, it's just a you know, little point. You can't always believe everything you see and hear in this world. Uh, believe me, I did play everything. I just maybe didn't play it all at the same time. You know, some of those bits may have been 20 minutes later or 20 minutes before. Anyway, see it, have fun with it, and uh, I hope it's uh, been informative and you've enjoyed it.
are moving I'm working on my thinking And I think it's improving I'm gonna get the blame So I might as well deliver If only I can swim across this weird human river I know I started out with the best of intentions Some blinding inspiration in a few Not to mention And now I'm looking deep into the land that was Razzle Dazzle Plus. Uh, those of you who were paying attention will note that it's different from the the album version, the release version. Uh, the album version fades out. Uh, we actually played on a little longer. Uh, so what I did, I married the headphone mix I had uh, with the album track at the end. So you get the extra 15, 20 seconds of us playing until it breaks down. Uh, it's nothing I did was special, but I thought Steve Morse's chunky rhythm playing and it was just great. And listening back, I really don't know why we faded it out so quickly, because that was great playing. Anyway, now you get a chance to hear it uh, in its entirety. Anyway, till next time, Stay safe, have fun. <laughs>